How you do everybody? Hope you're all keeping well. Um, really highly requested episode coming up on this one. I've got Heather on who is a OnlyFans creator and she also does stripping as well. So we're talking about that industry and how Heather makes her money. Really, really interesting. Um, and I covered all the questions that listeners had sent in. So please let me know what you think about it. Big thanks as always to Paul at Let Me Repair for the continued sponsorship. Check them out online. Thanks, I'll speak to you soon. Heather, thank you for coming on. You would not believe the amount of people that have messaged the page. See, before I'd even spoke to you saying, get somebody on that does like OnlyFans creation or, yeah. or something in that line of work because it's everywhere. And obviously, by pure luck, the whole shit we only fans happens uh, the same oh God, kinda, yeah that is true and it, it was the same week wasn't aye, it? Yeah. same week yeah um and i'd have everybody messaged me like that. did you know anything about this like, <laughs> fuck would i know anything about that that is good shit. like that's good luck there <laughs> um so i appreciate you coming <laughs> on i appreciate okay. it's something that some people are happy to talk about some people mm-hmm. aren't they happy to talk about for you obviously the, the, the first question and it's a question that everybody sent me mm-hmm. How did you get into it in the first place? Um, well, I got into it, first of all, for stripping. Yep. Um, so I started when I was 19, 20. Mm-hmm. I've just come up for 26 now. Yeah. Um, and I got into it because I was a student and I needed money. Mm-hmm. And I was a bit wild back then. So <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were on. But um, do you want to know how I got into stripping first or only fans Yeah, first? not even that. But so then, mm-hmm. when you're obviously a student and yeah. you know yourself, most students at that point will maybe go and get a job in Tesco mm-hmm. or, or something like that. But what got you into that area because that's a bold yes. move. <laughs> yes. So basically I was um, in my first year and I was working in a cafe and I lo- I did love the cafe and that, mm-hmm. but um, I just wasn't making enough money. Like I was working constantly right. and like I was on minimum wage and yeah. Uh, so I like Googled like um, what's like the best jobs to have. And it was like <laughs> stripping waitress. Right. And I was like, cause you can make tips. And I was like, oh, well, I'll do that. So then I ended up working in the strip club as a receptionist. Right. Okay. And then I loved it, like, and I was making tips, like, on reception. Like, guys were just... Yeah, so not even yeah. doing anything like that. I was just yeah. sitting there, and, like, guys were just giving me all their, mo- like, money, and they would sit in my desk, and they would talk to me all night, and they'd be like, you're so... Like, it was the first time when people would be like, oh, you're so pretty and beautiful, and I'd be like, really? <laughs> thanks. I was like, they're like, you have a nice body. I was like, I didn't even know that, but thanks. <laughs> um, and then my friend was dancing down in Newcastle, right. and I was like, I'm going to do it. I'm just going to take the plunge. And I went wow. in and did it. And I worked my first night. It was a Wednesday night. Right. And two customers came in and I made 20 pound. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I was just bit. But then I went back that weekend and I think I made like 500 pound my first weekend. Jeez. And like, because I was working minimum wage for so long. Yeah. I like opened my purse and I seen all the money. I'd never seen that much cash in my life. Overnight million. And I was like counting it in the sink and it was, I put it in like the <laughs> sink. And I was like, oh my God, like this is insane. And was it and just that bug of... Yeah, and so that night, like, right. I just was... I've ne- I'd never seen that much money in my life. And mm-hmm. I was like, ah, this is amazing. And all the girls that night were like, this is such a shit weekend. Such a bad weekend. And I was like, well, this is bad. Like, what yeah, is exactly. good? And yeah, and that was it. Like, I was like hooked instantly. I ended up taking mm-hmm. a gap year from studying to like just do stripping for a year. Because I just loved it so much. Like, I, such... I've enjoyed going to work. I used to work like seven nights a week. And that's yeah. a bold decision as well, it from was. a study point of view. Yeah, my mum was not happy. Like, How did that uh, conversation <laughs> go down? It, it was awful. Um, did so, she know at that point that you were right? Oh she wow! She knew I worked in the as a receptionist. Right. Which fine with. Basically, uh-huh. what happened was I had friends down in Newcastle, mm-hmm. and I used to visit there a lot to go nights out and stuff. And then one week I came back and I decided I wanted to move there. And then mm-hmm. by the I think I came back on the Monday, and by the Friday I'd already moved there. Oh. And I told mum when I was already there, I was like, I'm not coming back. Oh my God! And then I told her I was working as a receptionist in the strip club because I don't want to tell her. And then her best friend lives down there. And then like three months later, she came down. And then weirdly enough, the weekend she came down happened to be the night that my dad's friends came into the club and they told my dad and then they told oh my mom. My God. And she came to my house the next day and she was like, what are you doing? I don't even know where it, oh that's God. like a quadruple whammy yeah, into the one. It was, it, it just all happened at once. And I'm glad it did because it's better. That way. Did you know that it was your dad's friends that were there? Yeah, because I went up to them and I was like, oh my God, you're Scottish too. Oh, so it was in Newcastle and man. they were like, oh my God, you're, I won't say his name, but you're this person's <laughs> yeah, daughter. Yeah. Um, and I was like, oh my God. And it, had, it was his staff. Like, oh man. And they knew who, he, they, he'd worked in that company for years, so they knew instantly. And oh my God, it was horrible. 
the I, next I, day I, was I, horrible. I suppose the shoes say as well, though. Yeah. It kind of got it out of the way. Yeah, it got it out of the way. Um, and then mum came to my house. She, oh, she came to my friend's house, mm-hmm. her daughter. Like, I lived there. She didn't know I lived there either. Right. And it was just a big mess. And oh, man. She was so angry. <laughs> so angry she was I like su- please come home and i was like no i suppose but from yeah. she's also got the you've, you've left the study mm-hmm. part for a year yeah she thought you were doing the receptionist part you've moved yeah and then that's all happened and it's all kind of just it's came just, down <laughs> jeez yeah. and how is she now with, with the whole kind of situation she is all right with it mm-hmm. we, like she still doesn't like it yeah um, but i end up finishing my studies which she was happy about mm-hmm. um she's she's still a bit funny about what i do yeah. but a lot better yeah like she prefers me working online than going to the club yeah because obviously i'm not like it's less dangerous yeah and if yeah. you that that's something that obviously people probably don't see that mm-hmm. that side of it because yeah. they'll maybe anybody that's went in they'll come in pay the money get a dance etc and mm-hmm. go but from that point of view have you been in that situation where it, it does kind of cross that line? Yeah, I've had like people like wait outside clubs for me and stuff like that. Jeez. And I've had quite, a few, I've had, I think the worst thing that happened to me was I danced in Cavos mm-hmm. and a guy literally picked me up and threw me. Like, Why? Just... Um, because he wasn't like touch me. So I said no, but he, he just like that. And yeah, <laughs> it's horrible. Like, yeah. but now that can't happen, I guess. <laughs> Is he like, yeah. like seeing those situations? Mm-hmm. Were you still like, no, I'm, I'm going to keep doing this? Did it ever, do you ever get to a point where you're like, oh, this is a, this is a bit iffy? Never iffy, but I have quit like a million times. Yeah. Like, not quit, but like just be like, I'm never coming back Aye. because I've not made enough money or mm-hmm. our customers annoyed me or I've got an argument with Margaret or something like that. Yeah. But um, never like things like because they are so rare. Like mm-hmm. I've been dancing for what, four, five, five, six years yeah. now. And it's a handful of times that it's yeah. been bad. Like it's not regular it's, it's definitely not regular mm-hmm. it happened like other jobs as well it's the same yeah, yeah. and i suppose probably similar to, to other areas of work as well is there a kind of competitiveness between all the girls because at the end of the day you're trying to make money mm-hmm. and you're trying to oh, make as much money yeah. as you can but how does that working relationship it's go very competitive right. um like there's so many arguments basically like i like to describe it and people ask me at strip clubs it's like being in high school like the mm-hmm. american high school though where yeah. all the girls are like bitchy and stuff <laughs> like it's really weird because i was never like that i was like bullied in that in school yeah and then i had to become like this new person when i joined like the club yeah. i have to like you have to if you are shy and you do not stand your ground mm-hmm. you're gonna get walked over and people are gonna steal your customers and they're gonna like yeah. take piss at you. they're going to bully you basically yeah. you need to like become like a new person and was that so, a kind of learning curve for you oh 100% going, going I really had that? to like learn to be like stand up for myself like but then once you do like because it's so competitive because like you can be friends in the changing room you can sit and chat yeah. but as soon as you're out on the floor that's somebody's rent and that's like your yeah. rent you need like do you know what I mean like it's money so. yeah that's it and that, at the end of the day that's that's your office mm-hmm. is that, that it's not that, like a game around no, that yeah. no 100% yeah. and do you think people have that kind of misconception that you just make thousands a night oh, and God, it's so yeah. easy and yeah. you must get that a lot of oh, people yeah. saying like why do you need to work six days mm-hmm. a week surely you earn 10 grand and yeah. two nights and things like that oh, but how God, do you deal yeah. with that side of it everybody thinks i'm rich and yeah i'm like i'm not <laughs> like, does it annoy you though that kinda... it does because i think people assume i have like way more money than what i do yeah. and my job's easy mm-hmm. like i have had nights where i've owed the club money and you'll go so you have these like two or three months of like mm-hmm. dryness and like yeah and it's just horrible um yeah how does that work then in the sense of if you're if you're in a club mm-hmm. do you need to pay them a set amount or how mm-hmm. does that side of things work so it really does depend on the club mm-hmm. um from clubs that i've worked in they'll take a house fee at the start of the night mm-hmm. um that can go up every hour so if you want the club opens at nine it's not yeah. 10. and then well, the first club I worked in took the house fee and then they'll take a percent of your dances and a percent of like when you're using the VIP rooms. Okay. Some clubs will take a per- like a set amount at the end of the night, like on a Saturday night it's 100, a Friday night it's 80, mm-hmm. like that. Um, yeah. And some clubs will just do it through your dances mm-hmm. or like that really. So it just depends. Everything will take a cut from something. Yeah. And yeah. I suppose that's stressful for you then mm-hmm. because if you're sitting at maybe half 11, 12 and it's not been busy, mm-hmm. You're then worrying about coming out oh, at the end 100%. of the night in a minus and, yeah, and losing out on yeah. it. Yeah, and then you get those nights where it's really busy and all the yeah. customers are in, but they're not spending any money. And then the clubs yeah. like they'll get angry at you, like, "Why haven't you made any money tonight?" But then every guy you speak to, they're like, "No, I'm just in for a drink." Just and mm-hmm. that's frustrating. 
I can imagine. Yeah. Because it's not like you're just being handed a salary. Mm -hmm. Every yeah. month it's, it's, like a, it's a sales pitch. Oh, 100%. At the end of the yeah. day, isn't it? It's all sales. Like, That's insane. Yeah. And from the, the the point of view of the kind of the stereotype of a male or female mm. that goes into a strip club, did you find that it isn't just that kind of guy that's, that's deemed the kind of loner mm. that would go in? Do you find it's people from... Oh yeah, All like manner of areas. honestly, you don't really get that like stereotypical loner yeah. that goes in. It's very rare. Yeah. Well, you do like on the weekdays, but mostly mm -hmm. it's a group of guys. Mm -hmm. Stag do is definitely. Yeah. Um, mostly it's just a group of guys that have just been in town and they've mm -hmm. walked in like by chance or whatever. Yeah. Just normal people. Like that's what people say. Like, oh, you're dancing for old men. The people I dance with are so normal. Yeah. Like, like literally like, the most normal people you'd ever see. And it's that I suppose it's that kind of it goes with the money thing. People yeah. just think it's kind of old. 50, 60 something mm -hmm. guys that are rich that are just going there, mm -hmm. but it, it is nice. it's it's kind of broke not. down, yeah. is that? You do get that obviously, yeah. but it is mostly just groups of guys just like wanting to laugh in that. Mm -hmm. So that's crazy. Mm -hmm. What were you studying? A uh, TV production. Nice. Yeah. And did you even when you'd finished that, were you still can I fully focus on staying with, with strip mix etc or did you ever want to go into TV um, production I job wise? always wanted to work in TV mm -hmm. and the cameras and stuff like that. Like yeah. I, I was really passionate about it first yeah. year. And uh, that's a chat that mentioned before. That's the reason why I got into the stripping as well because mm -hmm. I know that you have to like jump around and like work for minimum wage and stuff yeah. first. But then when I hit my final year, I just hit a block and I burnt out and I didn't want to do it anymore. Mm -hmm. And then I just got through the year and then yeah. I still, I don't really want to work in TV anymore. Oh, man. Yeah, I just, I don't know. I was in all these like Facebook groups of like mm -hmm. TV jobs and everyone yeah. was just being really rude. And like, if your CV has this written on it, don't even expect a job and wow. you need to work minimum wage. And I just, oh, I, I think you need to be really, really passionate about yeah. it. And I just, I'm, I'm not Yeah. like, do you think you'll ever go back to it or? Maybe one day. Yeah. But right now I don't have it in me. Yeah. Like, I can't sit here and pretend that I love cameras. <laughs> yeah. And I can't sit there and say like, I've sat studying all this. Yeah. Yeah. But I suppose it's different because again, a lot of people that had kind of reached out to the page and you've went and studied, you've got mm -hmm. your degree, etc. You've done all that mm -hmm. hard graft. Whereas people may think somebody that goes to do strip my OnlyFans, etc., is somebody that hasn't got a career, yeah, doesn't know where they're going to do, yeah. that kind of dead end work, but it's not always the case because mm -hmm. you could go and do that TV yeah. production thing, but the, the stripping obviously provided that income and you're right, mm -hmm. where would you get 500 quid? Oh, exactly. Legally? Yeah, well, in, yeah. in any sort of yeah. work, like, do you know what I mean? Night, yeah, it yeah. just doesn't happen. But it doesn't. Go, going from that, obviously, from the online stuff, like the OnlyFans, etc., where did that start for you? So with OnlyFans, I started that in 2018, mm -hmm. which is quite like, I don't know when the site came out, but that is quite yeah. new to it. Um, it was my friend Dee right. that was doing it uh -huh. um, and she told me about it. And then I actually asked mom, I was like, would you be okay if I did this? Yeah. And then um, uh, I did it and I didn't even make much. I think I made $500 my first month, right. which like I thought it was quite good yeah. at first, but yeah, it was very, very different because that was my first, like I was... 21, 22 mm -hmm. when I started on fans. And that was the first ever like naked picture I'd ever taken myself. Full like, fear. I'd never done it before. <laughs> like, and it was like, I had to upload it. And yeah, I just thought a, a bit of extra money. And, How yeah. was that though? Like, see that first picture mm -hmm. that you're ready to upload? Yeah. Like, what's your mind? Oh, I was so scared. I was like, this is going to be all over the internet. <laughs> like, I was terrified. Yeah. Like, even more so than stripping. Like, stripping was just easy. Yeah. But, only fans, I was so scared. Like it did take me a long time to like progress like my content. Mm -hmm. like, I think it took, like two years it took just to like actually like do the full everything. Yeah. It took a long time, but um, yeah. And the, the, the thing that a load of people asked and me, me and Paul were talking about this when, when I'd said to Paul that I was, I was going to interview you but without being crass, right? For, mm -hmm. for any, any male or female, there's so many three places out there mm -hmm. where they could go and look yeah. at online pictures look mm -hmm. at online videos why do you think people go down that only fans route of subscribing and do you think it's more of a a kind of connection with people or more of a relationship type but from your point of view how do you see that difference so definitely see it from like a connection yeah like you can talk to me all day you can mm -hmm. ask me how my day is going yeah and all that and if you you can't like if you're on like porn hub or whatever you can't like message the girl in the video and be like, hey, can you do this for me? Like, yeah. can you do this kind of video? Mm -hmm. So it's definitely the connection. Like you kind of feel like 
like you know i don't know if you like don't feel like you're doing anything wrong Mm because you can speak to that person you know they're okay whereas the video you don't know who this person is you don't know their name or anything but you can speak to me and you can ask me if i'm okay with this yeah you know it's connection and is it do you get some people where it isn't like a physical attraction or a sexual thing it is just that people who want to have a conversation with, with somebody yeah you will get people subscribing to you or even like it's a webcam as well yeah. want to just speak to you just have yeah. a conversation yeah that's mental mm-hmm. it's like, see before i'd kind of arrange for you to come on i never really looked into the whole only fans thing yeah. i never realized how big it is it's from huge. a monetary yeah. point of view i yeah. think it was like seven or eight hundred million it's insane it like, had generated yeah. like over the last few years but from from your point of view how do you keep yourself relevant? How do you keep that content coming on a kind of daily or weekly basis to keep yourself at that point where you're making money? Well, like Twitter. Yeah. And that and Instagram. And I'm constantly uploading like mm-hmm. I upload like maybe like, when I do one set, like every other day, about sixty pictures and a Jeez. couple of videos in one go. Um so I'll do that. And I just like I, keep, I like to do new things as well. I like to like collabing mm-hmm. is huge. Right. Like see if you collab with people, uh-huh. that really helps because obviously you get their followers, our followers, yeah. and that's like the big one right now. Doing it because it is hard. Like if if I like stopped working for like a week, I'd probably lose like half my income for the month. Jeez. Like you have to be on it yeah. all the time. Like I was thinking about it the other day, like since 2018, I don't think a day has gone by where I haven't looked online and done some work on it. Like every single day I'm always on it. Like, do you enjoy it though do you enjoy that um, aspect of it as well like yeah, the online aspect i do enjoy it um i think I, I, yeah i do enjoy it but mm-hmm. i have obviously the same for everyone i have days where i'm yeah. like happy bored with this yeah um but it gives me so much freedom and then when i am online it's only a couple hours yeah so that's here and there yeah. what 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 is a typical day like for you mm-hmm. be, like across the board what would your day look like normally so i usually like get up and then I probably go the horses or go to the gym mm-hmm. and then I'll come home and I'll start a webcam session. Mm-hmm. So I do about five hours a day webcamming, like okay. five, five days a week. Right. And then in between while I'm camming, I'll just be on my phone mm-hmm. doing, I'll do like the Twitter like stuff mm-hmm. and like all that. And then afterwards I'll probably take some content and do that. And then yep. I'll probably like watch TV or something while going on Twitter and Instagram yeah. and just like promoting mm-hmm. and all that. And then obviously getting back to my mysteries as well and then my friend also she does she's my assistant for it uh-huh. so she'll reply to a lot of mysteries and stuff for me that's so insane that that's a lot of yeah different plates that, that is, are spinning yeah. at the one mm-hmm. time yeah i think that's a huge thing as well um with this job mm-hmm. if you're doing it and you want to like make it your full-time thing you need you can't just do one website yeah you need to have multiple because you might have a bad week and it, you could not pay rent like you need to have multiple yeah. different websites and multiple different things and do you feel that pressure at times as well mm-hmm. with like getting money in oh yeah yeah definitely like sometimes you'll be awake at night and you're like oh i don't know if i'm gonna make him off this week and yeah it's stressful but that's an eight and i yeah. suppose for you as well you've got you've got to worry about the content side of things you've got to do like your your webcam and etc but you've also got people who will message you on a daily basis mm-hmm. and you've got to kind of switch yourself into all those conversations yeah. and i suppose you'll hear people's problems as well and yeah, you're worrying about your yeah. own but how do you how do you manage to kind of compact that into yeah. each area so what i've learned is definitely don't tell my followers about my personal issues because yeah. they don't care <laughs> like really? literally Just... like after a couple of times i think it was like the first time i covered in january i was so ill and i was messaging them and i was like i'm like literally ill i can't move and mm-hmm. then they'd be like oh can you get me this video though so wow. you have to completely separate your like that side of your yeah. life and just be like the happy person that they they've is that hard to. though to kind of separate yeah sometimes you get days where you just like it's none of your followers fault but sometimes you'll be in a bad mood and you'll be like i hate you all no. you just don't care about me but it's just <laughs> it's stupid and then i snap out of it yeah and you're back yeah. to normal do you think you could do it i know you'd sit there and you've mm-hmm. got like someone that obviously helps you do you think it's possible to do it just on your own like with no um i could but it would be quite hard yeah yeah and i'm quite lazy at times <laughs> so <laughs> this job is going to be lazy that's one thing like not I mean, like, as in, like, lazy in the work, where I'm, I'm like, oh, I'll just do an hour or two today, where I could just sit, yeah, like, I could sit in the flexible. camps for 10 hours, but, yeah, yeah I'll and sit into five. See, see, from the the cam point of view, does that make more money than the picture side of things, or is there a, mm-hmm. a massive difference between... Honestly, I'd say, so I do admire me only fans of cam, I'd say they all make about the same amount a yeah. week. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes the same amount. Camming's more boring, though, because you are actually having to sit there for five hours. Yeah. Like you have to do that um, and you're on, you're chatting to people for five hours straight, whereas the 
you can just walk away from your phone only five yeah, minutes. Yeah, and switch it off. And, and see with the camera, mm-hmm. is it always people where there's a sexual thing there or a physical thing? Or do you get people on that as well that will just... I do get a lot of like, people chat. that just want to chat. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of it's for free, which is not good. Yeah. But um, a lot of them will pay, but not as much. I'd say the um, webcam is more sexual. Like mm-hmm. they just want to come on, like have a quick wank and yeah. leave. Yeah. yeah. And it, I suppose for you then, it's just like a business. Yeah. Transaction. Definitely, yeah. 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 I mean, it's actually, it absolutely blows my mind, honestly. <laughs> yeah. It absolutely yeah. blows my mind. And yeah. see the amount of people that are now obviously doing OnlyFans, etc. Is it getting harder and harder to make money of it? Because again, same as the stripping, you'll you'll see headlines of people making mm-hmm. X amount of thousands a month, yeah. and people will then go, "Well, everybody must do that. They must make the same amount." Yeah. But from your point of view as a creator, how hard does it to keep that money? Um. Well, I thought I always keep saying like, "Oh, I don't want more people to join." Mm-hmm. So if I did, but honestly, if I look at it, it hasn't really affected me. Yeah. Like I have like more little following, mm-hmm. and I have loyal people that have followed me for years. Yeah. So I don't find it too difficult, if I'm being honest. Like, mm. I always thought I would. I'd be like, I don't want this to go mainstream and all that. But yeah. it, it's gotten better, actually, mm-hmm. weirdly enough. Yeah. And obviously the elephant in the room is the mm-hmm. whole OnlyFan issue that erupted yeah. over the last week or two. Yeah. What, what was your take on that? So I actually wasn't too fast. I like my, I make more money on Admire Me the most. Right. Um, and when the Mario Me first came out, mm-hmm. I actually didn't use my OnlyFans for a full year. Right. Because like we like the website was just new. So I survived without that before. Mm-hmm. So I was just like, do you know what? These customers will follow me elsewhere. Yeah. And do you know what? If I lose that money um from OnlyFans, I can I'm sure I can find it from somewhere else. Like yeah. the, where the customers aren't gonna leave. Yeah. Like for like because that's not my primary like website. Mm-hmm. I felt people that it is, because a lot of people that is our main website and yeah. that would affect them a lot. And I was very lucky that I happen to do other things like mm-hmm. if it means i had to like work like an extra couple hours like cam a week i would i was okay yeah it's still easier than yeah being in that if you need to go and work in an office mm-hmm. for yeah, 10 exactly. hours to make the same yeah. money so i wasn't too stressed about yeah. it yeah. and see the the other ones like admire me and that do mm-hmm. they work the same way or is like a kind of different um, format no they pretty much work the same way mm-hmm. um admire me pays in pounds that's pretty much right. the difference right, okay. you get more money with that one just because yeah. you don't have to do the dollar thing Right, okay. And that's a British-based one, so that's pretty much the main Yeah, thing. just the yeah. same. And I see from the point of view of when you're talking about stripping and there is that ultra-competitive mm-hmm. environment, is it the same in the online world or is there more of a support network as such for, um, for each other in that, that situation? So I would say it's pretty much the same situation. It's pretty much like Twitter is basically like the changing room of the strip club right, basically right okay um but it, when it comes down to it it can be competitive like mm-hmm. if you thought a girl's customer or something that'd be problems like right okay and there's a lot of like bitchiness in it there's a lot of great people yeah but there, there's arguments and there's bitchiness it's the same really so uh, just over your content and then mm-hmm. someone else's and yeah it's like just an online strip club isn't it really so you just, just live in a constant high school we can uh... yeah but i'm <laughs> very like i don't i like my main thing is I try not to give my opinion on Twitter mm-hmm. a lot or I try not to get into arguments a lot just because I don't like confrontation yeah. at all. I, I hate it. It right, gives me okay. anxiety. Yeah. So I like to just keep to myself like that mm-hmm. and I think it's better that way. It's yeah, the same okay. in the club as well. Like mm-hmm. I always just kept to myself and like have my own little friends. And yeah. Yeah. And see, if the, see for the kind of collab point of view, mm-hmm. do you would you do that with people that you kind of trust or would you branch out and try and speak to kind of other um, creators yeah, and things well, or... Aye, that's what they do. Um, they would just message me and be like, do you want to collab? And I'd be mm-hmm. like, yeah, sure. Yeah. Like, if they have a lot of followers and stuff, or even though, not even if they have a lot of followers, if they have like an account with like the only yeah. fans and it seems safe enough and they've collabed before. Mm-hmm. Um, we do like, when I do collab, will they have to be certified though? Right, okay. Like, um, for like STD checks and all that. Right, okay. Yeah. yeah. And is it that whole kind of trust element as mm-hmm. well, I suppose? Because if it's somebody that you've not worked with before yeah. and obviously they might have a following but it might be very different from yours mm-hmm. and yeah. i suppose from your point of view you're placing a lot of trust in people from yeah, that point of view yeah. as well but then if you don't make money off it you don't make money off it yeah that's it really yeah interesting yeah so it's not like that big of a deal for like yeah. to collab and you don't make as much as that you d- i don't rely on it like yeah it's just all. an additional yeah and see on the online stuff and this was actually a question that I think about 80 females had messaged mm-hmm. the page and asked me 
do you think there's a shelf life for it from a from a career point of view? Do you think there's only so long you can do it or do you think it's something that you could do? So I always thought there was like a shelf mm-hmm. life, um, especially dancing, so I always thought there was. But I don't think so anymore. Mm-hmm. There are a lot of older people doing it. Right. And I think there's a market for everybody. Yeah. And it's whether you want to do it for like the rest of your life. But if you wanted to, I'm sure you could. Yeah. I'm sure you could build up a big enough fan base to be mm-hmm. able to do it for your whole life. Yeah. Yeah. If you work hard enough, as long as you like don't neglect your pages. Yeah. And like you actually keep it consistent, then yeah, definitely. You could do it till you're old, I guess. And I suppose with the the social media world, mm-hmm. obviously, as much as there's a lot of good with it, there's mm-hmm. a lot of yeah. crackpots with it yeah, as well. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and it, probably more so from the type of work you do, you will attract mm. even more from that yeah. from that area, whether you've got a normal online account or Instagram or Twitter or whatever, but for if you're like Cam and you've got your OnlyFans, etc., how do you switch off for that side of things? And do you get that a lot? Do you get a lot of kind of random messages from people? See, I'm very lucky. I don't really know why I'm so lucky, but I've not had much hate at all. Right, okay. Like, I've had the odd one over the last couple of years. Like, I barely get any. I don't mm-hmm. know if it's because I just don't share my opinion on things or yeah. whatever. Um, but you just have to ignore it. There's, I think the worst thing you can do is, like, take their bait mm-hmm. and start arguing with them. Yeah. Yeah, I've had... I've had I've my fair share at least, but not much. Yeah. Not much to like put me off or anything. Because like, if you do anything, like you yeah. could have any job in the world and you'll probably get abuse online. That's it. Yeah. yeah, I suppose. And it's good as well that obviously you've you've been in a situation where you've not had that, mm-hmm. that much. Because even when I was having a look on Twitter a couple of weeks ago and it was, can't remember the account and I wouldn't name it anyway, but like she was getting dog's mm, abuse it is horrible like, and you're reading really something horrible. and you're like that's yeah. a human being yeah man. like sometimes i see it and i'm like someone's doing that to me i actually don't know if i'd be able to cope yeah like it's horrible like what it's, people get do you think you develop a thicker skin oh 100%. just naturally yeah you have to because mm-hmm. you have to not care what people think so if i could what people thought then i'd be yeah. a big mess like mm-hmm. it's horrible people are so nasty yeah really bad and I know we spoke about your mum mm-hmm. and, and your dad, obviously, and, and how they found out. Yeah. It's just <laughs> unbelievable. But yeah. obviously, family and friends is a massive circle. Mm. How How is that side of things? Because you you know yourself that everybody's got a view on everything and yeah. everybody's got an opinion on everything. Yeah. But how is the kind of wider family and your friend circle with, with what you do? So, like, I've made... Like, my best friends are all in this industry. Yeah. I made some amazing friends. Um, a lot of people have been very supportive. Like, I've never had a friend, like, be nasty about it mm-hmm. or anything. Um, everyone's pretty supportive. But the only thing I would say, I literally, like, only have a couple of friends that are females that aren't in the industry. Yeah. Kind of, I don't know why I find it hard to be friends with girls who aren't in the industry. I suppose yeah. it's it's just a totally different world. Yeah, I feel like they always think I'm going to like sleep with their boyfriends or something. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, it's like something. I don't know why, but like, I don't know. Yeah, but um, I have like male friends as well. Yeah. We don't really speak about it. It's just... Which is good though. Yeah, it's great. Like, I couldn't deal with like having friends but, like what to speak about it all the time. Yeah. Yeah. And like, do you get that a lot? Do you yeah. get people don't kind of throw stuff at you all mm-hmm. the time? Yeah, when I first started dancing, like I felt like a lot of people just wanted me around because they're like, oh, she's a stripper. Like just yeah. using that, yeah. it was like kind of a cool thing, and like mm-hmm. they'd introduce me to their friends. Like this is um, Heather; she's a stripper, and I hated that. Yeah. I really didn't like that. Well, I suppose but, as well, yeah. You're then having to deal with people stereotyping you before mm-hmm. you even said I want exactly, to them. Exactly, exactly. Oh, I couldn't deal like, with that. It's like I'm comfortable telling you what I am, but like I didn't like that. So, yeah, it's different. Yeah. If different if you're telling someone, but if people mm-hmm. are already got that be perception worrying yeah. away in their head it's hard for you to then mm-hmm. build any sort of relationship with that Definitely. person. Definitely, and then a lot of people refer me to the stripper. And oh, it's just like, that. oh, don't do that. <laughs> it's like, it's just me. Like, it's like you're letting my whole job, like, define my entire life. Yeah. So, yeah, that was like... But now, because all my friends, like, are in the industry, and mm-hmm. everyone knows, it's not really like that anymore. So it's good. And it's I suppose it's good as well having friends that are in the industry because mm-hmm. when you are having those shit days they can relate Definitely. because they've had them yeah, as well at times yeah it's great like they're so supportive of everything like we can't they're not gonna sit and be like when you get in an argument be like well you put this online because yeah. they do it too yeah so that's an argument yeah. as well like you'll be friends with somebody and then they'll get into like one argument but like, well you're a, you're a slag you're a stripper so yeah, yeah and i suppose that's the kind of 
goes back to like any working environment, like whether it's male or female, mm -hmm. people just go for something that they think exactly. will both like hurt the other person. They, I, they kinda, think that's your weakness, basically. Yeah. So. Whereas from your point of view, what, why would it be a weakness? Mm -hmm. It's your job. Exactly. It's, it's what you do. It's how you earn a living. Exactly. And it's like not, not everything about me. It doesn't like define me. Do no, know? that's it. And yeah. the, the thing, I think that's why I, w I was so curious to get someone on from that industry because for me, there's, there, there isn't a difference mm -hmm. on me going to work and earn the money and you going to work and earn the money. Yeah. There's a different way of doing it. And I think it's good to speak to people that do it as a job because people can then squash those kind of stereotypes that they've got in their head because mm -hmm. they don't exist. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's just a kind of, you're not sitting there making a hundred grand a weekend. And exactly. <laughs> working, why would you be working seven days a week? Yeah, exactly. If you did, then yeah. it's, as you say, people don't think of your first night and you make 20 quid. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like you and have it, so many bad nights. Yeah. <laughs> Would you go into like an office and work for nine hours and the, your boss goes, there's, there's 20 quid. Literally. You'd be like, fuck yeah. off. Or no, it's like your boss would come over and be like, by the way, you owe me 40 quid. That's horrific. So. And is there a, is there a pressure from the stripping side of things that you are under to keep your job? Like, do they always keep girls on or does there come a point where they may get rid of people? Oh, or... I got fired. <laughs> Did you? So job. how does that work? How do they measure that um, success? They, they won't really do it because, they won't fire you because you've not made enough money. Yeah. Or that. They'll find some reason. You get like, um, I don't know, it depends on the club. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they'll like mark your name. Like if you get like four strikes, three strikes. Yeah, and it's, thing. that yeah. would be hard as well. It is. <laughs> yeah. Because it is such yeah. an ultra competitive environment. It would just be more pressure yeah, for you. Definitely. And if you think it's like a good club and that, then you get fired. I've only been fired once, to be honest. And I've been to like hundreds of clubs. So that's that's good. not bad. Yeah. It's a <laughs> decent <laughs> average. Yeah. Take that. I will take that. <laughs> <laughs> um, a question that a lot of people, again, asked, surprisingly enough, male and female, mm -hmm. around not just OnlyFans, but online creating, be it whatever website or whatever company, what advice would you give to anybody who's in the position of they've maybe done something else, maybe done stripping or mm -hmm. they've maybe done some other line of work and they want to move into online work based on what you went through from mm -hmm. your side, what would you tell people advice-wise? Advice-wise, um, you can do it anonymously, but it's quite hard. Like mm -hmm. I get that a lot. People mesh me, I want to do it, but I want to do it anonymously because uh, my parents can't find out, my partner can't find out, yeah. people are going to find out. Like mm -hmm. once you start that, they are going to find out yeah. what you're doing. So be ready for that. Mm -hmm. I guess like in our advice, you, you're going to be online forever. Like yeah. you need to deal with that. You're going to get hate like, mm -hmm. as well. I think another thing is save your money. Save yeah. everything. Also like save the money that you're going to pay in your taxes because you're going to have to pay your taxes. Yeah. Um. So if you made like 300 quid, don't just blow it because yeah. you're going to have bad weeks. Mm -hmm. Saving is huge. Mm -hmm. Um. Have multiple forms of income Yeah. to promote yourself. Like reach out to other creators and ask if they can have it like shout out for shout out mm -hmm. and all that stuff like that. Um, get into like little Twitter groups. Yeah. Um, try to promote your account mm -hmm. and it might go slow at first, but just mm -hmm. keep going really. And I, I you've probably just said it there as well. It's another thing like people think that you wouldn't pay tax or anything. Everybody or thinks I don't pay you taxes. just sit like spinning Literally, cash away all the time. Uh, like I've been paying <laughs> my taxes since like I started stripping. Like I pay every yeah. year. <laughs> like I do my own taxes yeah. as well. So like everybody thinks like, I don't. Yeah, you're just earning all this money. It's and like get a real job. And it's like, what? Well, what is a real job? Because I pay taxes. So should I just tell the tax man that I can't pay because I don't actually have a job? Exactly. So, <laughs> and it, it goes yeah. back to that. The tax man doesn't care what you do for a I job. Know, exactly. Like, you owe us like, money. Uh -huh, like you can't just like, <clears throat> think I can just sit here and earn like a grand a week and they won't care. Yeah. Like obviously I have to pay. You'd have the yeah, whole world just uh, how would you pay doing that for a job. Aye. You need to like, when you're like going for a house or mortgage or a car, yeah. you need to prove that you're getting money. So Exactly. Yeah. Does that annoy you when people talk, define it as kind of not a real job um, and a hobby as such or just a gimmick? I like kind of just got used to it now. Mm -hmm. I'm not even going to argue with them because yeah. I've had that since dancing. Yeah. I don't really care. Like define what is a real job then. Exactly. Like I'm going somewhere, I'm making money. Mm -hmm. what, what's a real job? Yeah. Like, yeah. And it... <clears throat> It's probably if you've got somebody who's maybe sitting doing 35, 40, 45 hours in a, a job and fair play to them, mm -hmm. obviously it's to yeah. their own, but they're slating you for doing a job where you're earning a lot of money mm -hmm. and you're thinking, well, who's the real, who's the real mug here? Mm. Because if you're choosing to slate someone for them earning money because you don't necessarily agree with what they're doing, 
it doesn't make that job any less yeah, real than, than the true. one that you're doing. It's just, yeah. it baffles me. Definitely. I think another thing <clears> that does annoy me, though, is I do see a lot of, like, creators, like, be like, why would you even work at, like, an office job or whatever mm-hmm. and make this when I, I'm making this much money? And I think everyone's on their own path. Yeah. And if you want to do it, like, if you don't want to do sex work, you, you don't have to. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. So that's another thing that like, you've got the two sides to it. And I suppose it's, for most people, they probably go into that situation, see the money that is potentially there. Mm-hmm. And it would be hard to walk away from because, as mm. you say, you have a look around. There isn't a lot of other places where you would true. earn. That is true. X amount of money for that period of time. Obviously, mm-hmm. you can go and earn money in other jobs, but it's the flexibility and things it like is, that as like, well. I could like, do it. And, like, I don't have any commitments, really. Mm-hmm. I can just like, go on holiday or something. Yeah. Like that. But then another thing is, like, it like it, you have like these people on like Instagram and stuff that have like a hundred k following, and then they'll make an like an OnlyFans, and then they post. I've just made like five k this day, mm. and there are people they expect like when they join the site to suddenly be making thousands, yeah. and then they end up only making like fifty like fifty quid a month or yeah. something. So you can't just start off with like no followers. You need to yeah. you need to build it up. Like I built it up, but I had like no followers at the far, at first, mm-hmm. and I really had to build it up. Long do you think it took you to get into that? Not a space of you're making X mm-hmm. amount, but a space where you felt comfortable mm-hmm. that you'd built a kind of decent base. Um, honestly, I would say 2020. Right. So okay. that's two two years it took me to actually build like the following where like I could live I could live like month to month off mm-hmm. of it. Um just that's a long pages. time as well. To kind that of put is, in yeah. There. Mm-hmm. Um I had to put like Instagram like constantly working mm-hmm. on that, like constantly mm-hmm. like putting up like first traps on Instagram yeah. to try to get more followers and Twitter as well. Like it took me a good two years just yeah. to get a following. And even still now I'm not making anywhere near like some of the bigger girls. Yeah. You know what I mean? And do you think that's what attracts people into it? But mm-hmm. then if you're then saying to them, it's gonna take you. 12, 18 months to build that. And then they're like, mm, yeah. is that quick money? Yeah, it's not as fast. And then as well, some people will make one and it'll be like all like people from their town that will end up following. So they'll have yeah. a really good month, like yeah. the first month, but then it's not going to continue. But that's not like mm-hmm. it. Some people can join and just become overnight, be rich. And sometimes it takes time. It's, it's yeah. so hit and miss. It's, yeah. yeah. You've just got to keep building it. Yeah. 100%. And the, the golden question that, I'm curious about personally, but a lot of people also asked, how do relationships work in that environment? <laughs> because I've seen, like, when I had put the ad out to say, is there anybody that does OnlyFans, etc., that would like to come on? A guy actually messaged me and said, my girlfriend does mm-hmm. it. And I was like, this is the most bizarre conversation <laughs> I've ever had yeah. with anybody. And he was like, she does X, Y, and Z. And I'm like, right. And I was like, have you spoke to her about this? And he's like, no, she'll be fine with it. And I'm like, that's bizarre. But he was like so, so chilled about it. And I'd imagine there's another side to it as well. But how do you find it from a kind of meeting people or or being going out with somebody or how does it work? For me personally, relationships are like non-existent for me. Because of that? No, I don't think it's just me. Right. Like that's the thing like. Oh, that's one of the things where I was doing the pro and cons when I first started, like mm-hmm. how it would affect relationships. Mm-hmm. But like I've been single four or five years now. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I think about before dancing and I was still like getting messed about and it was yeah. still not that many people were interested in me. Yeah. So it hasn't changed really, I don't think. And do you find it's something that is a kind of sacrifice given what you mm-hmm. do or are you not bothered with that, with that kind of side of it because you're doing what you enjoy doing anyway? I think definitely puts a label on me or guys mm-hmm. like wouldn't want to speak to me because of it yeah but that's i wouldn't say it's a bad thing if a guy doesn't want to go out with you because it doesn't like your job then that's fine that's mm-hmm. up to him he has a choice yeah but it definitely i think it's like online dating i don't even bother with that at mm-hmm. all anymore because it's physically impossible because as soon as you mention your job it's just either just think that you're just gonna like have one night stand with them yeah or like they're just like oh right, okay and ask you loads of questions and then that's it it turns into an interview rather yeah, than and then potentially they, meeting somebody. And then it turns, they think they can just, they don't see you as the person anymore. They just see you as this like sex object. Yeah. Like, oh, can I get some nudes or yeah. do you want to meet for like a hotel or something? <laughs> like, so I don't even, online dating, don't even bother with it yeah. like, at all. Yeah. Interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. Um, weird requests. Mm-hmm. So I'm assuming that you've had some random yeah. requests over the, the years yeah. and, the deviants of the the page have, were all like, 
ask about the weirdest <laughs> thing is that she's been yeah. asked about or ask her about kind of points that have really stuck out for mm-hmm. other random things that have happened so up to you what you yeah. want to say and what you don't want to say <laughs> i think it's actually quite weird because i've had, had this last month in camps so last couple of months i've had two people like two different people do this thing where they want me to comb my hair like just comb it and like tie it back right. and, like they want to watch me slowly tie my hair back and then undo it and then like <laughs> just do it like that and stuff that's yes. strange another really weird one i've had quite a few times in the mm-hmm. past like, i didn't even know this was a fetish right is um like broken ankles or broken wrists or something so i've had like so a guy asked me like on cams have you ever broken your ankle and i was like yeah i broke it like like a year ago or something Aye. and he was like it took me private straight away and that's when they're paying like minutely for like, the conversation so what does that mean that so, if you're in like a cam yeah. do they have the option to go into like yeah, somebody else so they're and... in like the website that i use stream mate they're mm-hmm. in you're in like a free chat and these guys come in got you. um and they're speaking to you and then you'd be like take me private right and then they pay minutely got you for that. right so okay the guy took me private instantly and i wasn't even like naked or nothing like that, just talking to him and he was like please describe like what happened to your ankle like <sighs> what happened how bruised was it how swollen was it really sore when you're putting on your shoes um, but then it got really strange and he was like i'd push you around in a wheelchair and all that would you what? let me push you out here and he was like would you help would can i wash you and like <laughs> can i help you change you with the toilet and that's when i was like no i'm not doing that Jeez. this is this is where i've cut the line i'm not that's too far for me that's bizarre. it's strange and i had do you know what i thought it was just one off and then like i walked in a couple of weeks later and it was another one and another one and these are all different people like different accounts and they're just what, like please describe your broken ankle and i was like oh, thank god i broke my ankle like, I'm not, like a couple of years ago because now i can describe I just it i don't understand why anyone would have any sort mm-hmm. of kind of enjoyment they were like please tell me how swollen it got and how bruised it got and there were, I don't know, it was the oddest request. I don't get it. Does anything shock you? Um, I didn't, sh- like, not really anymore. No. It didn't really shock me, just like, that's kind of strange. Yeah. Yeah. I think, like, I think when I first joined, I was very, um like, when I first started stripping, I, mm-hmm. I'm very like, innocent or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, um, a lot of, like, a foot fetish one, I didn't get it. It's so common now, I don't even care. But, like, yeah. that was weird to me at first. Like, yeah. Feet. yeah that's I suppose strange. there's so many different kind of taste and mm-hmm. each to their own but the kind of hair thing and the yeah that was true broken ankle thing is bizarre yeah there's another one that i don't personally do it just because i don't really get asked a lot but my friends do mm-hmm. it's called splosh i think it is and like you put like food all over you <laughs> like squash just like, you like, yourself or they um, put food I, on you no i think like they can do it you can do it in groups or like you can do it yourself like you pour like beans over you or like oh, bananas no. or chocolates <laughs> <laughs> i'm quite happy that i've never really been asked that because i don't really fancy that no. <laughs> but um that's an odd one. That would be random. Yeah. Especially, um, well, it depends on the type of food. Because somebody yeah. says to you, it's like baked beans or oh something. Oh, God, you'd be no, like, I'd be like, I'm not putting beans on. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's not happening. <laughs> but it, that's quite a common one. It's oh, strange. Man. But now I kind of like want to break my arm or something because like, if I had a cast, I feel like I'd make loads of money that week. <laughs> like, put it on Twitter, like, like if I have a broken arm. That guy would be back. Like, yeah, I'm here. I know. <laughs> Do you get females as well or is it male only? Um, online, I've only had a couple of females. Mm-hmm. I actually don't dance for girls in the club. I have a rule now um, right. that I personally do not dance for females in the club. Okay. Only because, so I'll, I've always watched and worked in non touching clubs. Okay. Um, and the, women, the people who have touched me the worst. Are, have been women really yeah i've had like a woman like spank my, like spank my ass like so hard that she bruised it Jeez. and uh, i don't get in trouble for it as well how is that because um oh because i turned around and she just did it and then they were like oh you should have like known not to not tell her not to touch and all that and, like, you should have been more strict for, i was like so Jeez. and i've had like um women that really try to touch like but, like wow yeah really is that surprising for you like it being was in that situation surprising. yeah because i don't want to stop dancing for females but like, yeah because i think that's quite bad but like it just got to the point where i was like i can't keep getting like touched yeah that. like it's, it's getting dangerous at this point so i just when i dance in strip clubs i have that rule now i find that incredible uh, yeah i think it's because they think because they're females as well and because they think it's like a laugh yeah and they're not doing it like a sexual yeah. for me because it is my job mm-hmm. i can't have you like trying to do that yeah. like it's not appropriate and yeah. you would always assume it would be males. Yeah, in exactly, the, In a strip exactly. club environment, you would yeah. ask a hundred mm-hmm. people, they would say, be a guy. Yeah, hundred percent, yeah. But the guys are usually all right. They barely, rarely try to touch. So what I do is I get them in and I say, hands at side, no touching. Mm-hmm. And if they touch once, they have to put their hands behind their back. And if they touch second, that's it, done. They're, you're out. Jeez. And I take yeah. it in that situation, nine times out of ten, people are kind of, right? Yeah, okay. they, like the guys have paid for it. They want the dance. They're not yeah. going to 
get themselves chucked out for it. Like they will obviously, yeah. but um, why, if you pay twenty quid, why would you want it stopped? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the women like I'm like, I'm like this is assault if you That's just right. keep going. Out yeah. of control females. I know, literally. <laughs> so bonkers. Yeah, I, after like probably like ten times of that happened, I was like, I can't do this yeah. anymore. Like, sorry to, sorry to the women, but <laughs> yeah. I can't risk it anymore. If you were a change anything about mm-hmm. the industry what would it be if you had the option to change um, anything i've had the option in the club in the di- strip club i want an early wage <laughs> like, really do you because, think that would be better yeah, i'll take less money for dance or whatever because mm-hmm. you have to some nights you go on stage and you're getting topless on stage and you're entertaining all the customers mm-hmm. and then if you're making more money i've sat and worked and entertained your customers and gone on stage for mm-hmm. what like nothing yeah so i'd like even two pound an hour <laughs> or yeah. something like that. Does any club do that? Are they all not that the I same know. in that sense? Um, not that I know of personally. Mm-hmm. I'm sure maybe somewhere, but yeah, not that I know of. So probably change that. Yeah, and I suppose it would be a kind of whether girls would take that or whether they would prefer mm-hmm. what they're doing just now. Because as you say, if you've got those days where and I'd imagine you've had them if you go into a club and there is only like a dozen people or mm-hmm. less and you're dancing and you're like fucking you go you get like a couple a group that'll come in and they'll sit and they'll be like a Monday night and yeah. they'll be the only group that come in and you'll go on stage like four or five times mm-hmm. and they won't buy anything. Yeah. And you've just wasted money coming in. And yeah. It's like, why? So like, yeah. And on the busier nights, mm-hmm. how does it work in the sense of are the girls rotated or, or can you all work on these nights or how do clubs kind of do that side of so things? It really does depend on the club. Mm-hmm. Um, so mo- most clubs in the UK, you book in the shift. Right. So some clubs, um, it'll be you do a monthly rota mm-hmm. or you'll just do your weekly rota. Mm-hmm. And usually how it works is um, if you say oh, I have to work on the Friday, I've said I'm going to work on the Friday. Mm-hmm. I can't just like call up, well, I can't just not show up. Yeah. Like you're booked or you get fined. You're booked right, in that okay. shift. And then if you're sick or something, mm-hmm. usually you have to find another girl to cover you. Right, so that's okay. how it works usually. It's like a regular job. Yeah. I can't just like, say I'm going to work tonight and not bother mm-hmm. coming in. I can't just text at nine o'clock and be like, I'm not coming in anymore. Yeah. And like, I suppose it's yeah. the whole thing we have, if you're sick mm-hmm. or anything like that, you yeah. can't just be like, get my sick pay and, yeah. and sit and be fine for X yeah, amount exactly. of weeks. Yeah. And put the pressure off. I need to get back to work mm-hmm. and, yeah. and start earning money. It's the same as like an office job. Like you couldn't, if you started at nine that morning, you can yeah. phone your boss up at five to nine, but like, by the way, I've got a headache, I'm not coming in. Yeah. Like he'd be like, what? No. Yeah. It's like, unless you're like really ill. Mm-hmm. It's, you need to like, it's the same as every other job because they rely on you coming in to make yeah. their money. They can't have no girls show up. So. How do you find the owners of the clubs? Because there's been numerous documentaries mm-hmm. and numerous programs about kind of, owners of strip clubs and how they're perceived but from someone that, that's worked in one do you feel that's a fair representation or have have you found like in a different viewpoint um, on it i find a lot of owners are awful right there's only been a handful of good ones for mm-hmm. me they, they, they'll take like all your money literally. yeah like obviously they're good clubs i've worked in a good few clubs but mm-hmm. a lot of them are awful and they yeah. just care about your money especially like the men well not all the men run, run ones but a lot of the men run mm-hmm. ones yeah they're quite bad and it's just purely see the girls as your money yeah yeah, yeah you make money mm-hmm. but they have been have had great managers as well yeah so it really just depends yeah interesting a question that i always ask people no matter like what area of the work they're in obviously you you started stripping when you were 19 19 20 say? i think it was yeah so let's take heather back to when she was 19 mm-hmm. based on everything that you've went through everything that you know now what would you tell yourself at that starting block? Maybe see what I'm passionate about mm-hmm. instead of going after money, go after that as well. But also, I'd, I wouldn't say don't dance. Yeah. I'd say dance. I think not even for the money at all, like the confidence it gave me. Like a lot of people say that when they meet me like years later, they're like, you're so different. Like you're mm-hmm. so confident now. Mm-hmm. It, like it helped me a lot. Yeah. That. But um, definitely like don't let go of your passions. Yeah. Like, study more. <laughs> <laughs> like, but then you still yeah. got your your I, qualifications yeah, I still anyway. Got it, but well, I didn't get the grade I wanted at all. Mm-hmm. I got quite low grades because I just gave up. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I'd say if just find something you're passionate about and mm-hmm. focus on that as well. That's it. definitely the same as well. This is blew my mind. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, and, and I, I mean that in the nicest way. It's just mm-hmm. good to because like everybody else before I'd spoke to you and you look at all these kind of platforms you do build up a premonition in your head mm-hmm. and you'll see these people that are like, oh, I earn 
X amount a month and you think, right, that must be fucking easy. Yeah. Easy money. But I've never thought about it from the other side of you're relying on people subscribing mm-hmm. when you're working in the club, you're relying on people coming in and, exactly. and paying for a dance. Yeah. If they don't, you don't get paid. Oh, 100%. Like, I have, like, bad mums, just like everyone has yeah. bad mums. I have my good mums and I have my bad mums. Like, sometimes I barely make, like, not even minimum wage a week, mm-hmm. you know? And does it ever... Yeah. Does it ever put you off or do you just put it down to it's just one of the weeks? Yeah, some well, sometimes I like panic and go on indeed.com and be like, I need to find a job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then, and then I'll have a good week the week after. I suppose, right. but when you're saying about saving in that, mm-hmm. it's having that sensible approach as well yeah. of don't just kind of spend what yeah. you've got coming in. I was very stupid my first year of dancing. I was making so much money. I don't even want to think about it, honestly. <laughs> and I just blew it all, like just going out. I went so many holidays. <laughs> I was going on like four or five holidays a year at one point. Just, I suppose, but from yeah. the jo- working in the cafe to, yeah, to that. I, I, so I thought this might last forever, obviously. Yeah. I never thought the clubs would shut down with COVID or whatever. <laughs> yeah, but the, before COVID, even the clubs were slowing down. Mm-hmm. I wasn't making as much money. So I've Do you think that's because of the online? No, I think it was already the dining industry before then. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Mm. But I don't know why, to be honest. Yeah, I don't just, think it was online. I think it's just one of them things. Just quieting down. Yeah. What's the biggest splodge you've had? Got to ask oh now. Goodness. Do you know what? I'm actually quite bad at not at, at spurging. I don't really do it. Um, I think I'm, I don't know if this counts as spurge, but I guess spurge was I decided to go to Thailand for a month and right. I just left everything behind. And yeah, just that's, went. that's definitely that a spurge. spurge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, um, I just got all my money right. together and went for like, I went till the money ran out and then I just came home. <laughs> yeah. Was it, was it good? Amazing. Right. <laughs> I won't lie. It was really, it was probably the best. Like, one of the best trips I've ever taken. And was it one of these kind of, like the Newcastle one, like mm. in your head for a day or two and you're like, right, I'm away, yeah, gone, done. Yeah, literally. I, well, to be fair, I thought I'd have lasted longer, but I spent a lot of money, like doing all the trips. <laughs> now, like doing like elephants and stuff. Yeah. And all that fun stuff. That's probably, the, that was probably the biggest splurge I've made. Love that. I don't know Amazing. what else I've really splurged on. That's, that's, yeah. that's good on its own. <laughs> Guess what, a car? I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Car as well. Yeah. But I suppose it's good because you've obviously realised that now going a few years down the line, you do need to kind of yeah. plan a wee bit as well yeah, for those definitely. kind of shit times mm-hmm. that you have. Yeah, like I would go out every like every weekend, nights yeah. out, cocktail bars, everything, going out for food, mm-hmm. uh, going on holiday. And now I'm like, I would never say no to anything. Like, yeah. So I'd be like, do you want to go holiday next week? Yeah, I'm going to holiday. Um, now I'm so careful. Yeah. Like I have to, I've, I've got my own like little goals of like what I'm working towards and mm-hmm. I'm not so much. I've, I feel like I've done, I'm like 25. So I feel like I've done like everything I wanted to do now. Yeah. So now it's time to just like sort myself and get save. the planning head on. Yeah, definitely. Like plan for the future. I want to get like savings behind me. Mm-hmm. And yeah, for the future. I need to plan Love my that. future really. <laughs> <laughs> Heather, yeah. it's been brilliant. And thank you so much. No, but it's been good to meet you. Brilliant.